Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see about priority scheduling algorithms. First, let's see a short introduction on CPU scheduling algorithms. As we all know, CPU is the execution unit of a computer. It is responsible for running various instructions for several processes. When there are several processes, there is bound to, bound to be some competition among the processes for CPU's time and availability. So to manage these competitions, the OS employs some algorithms to schedule the time in which the processes will be executed based on some factors such as priority, execution time, uh, resource availability, etc. So uh, some common types of scheduling algorithms based on the, those factors are FCFS first come first serve, SJF shortest job first or SJN shortest job next, priority and round robin. Let's focus on priority scheduling algorithm. We are given with three processes with arrival time, worst time and priority. P1 has the highest priority and P2 has the lowest priority as we are given higher the number higher the priority. So, first let's draw the ready queue based on the arrival time. So, let's see the ready queue. Um, at time t is equal to 0, only the process p1 has arrived at the ready queue. So, we have put p1 at the ready queue at time equal to 0. When time is equal to 1, which is the next arrival time given to us, P2 arrives at the ready queue. When time is equal to 2, P3 arrives at the ready queue. This is our ready queue for this problem. Then let's move on to the Gantt chart. In the Gantt chart, imagine the uh, this line as a timeline. As usual, we start from 0. At 0, which uh, process will be at the ready queue? P1 will be at the ready queue. So P1 will be executed until when we are given as non preemptive algorithm there are two ways an algorithm will be executed one is preemptive and the other is non preemptive this concept is pretty simple now non preemptive just means uh, the process will not release the cpu until the whole process is completely executed in a preemptive algorithm the process will release the CPU when the next algorithm, next process arrives at the ready queue. So for example, when P1 is at the ready queue at time 0, uh, it will be executed until uh, the next process P2 arrives at the ready queue. So when at time is equal to 1, the uh, process P1 will ready release the CPU and P2 P2 will hold the CPU whether or not the P process P1 completes its execution. In preemptive, non preemptive, uh, the process will not release the CPU until it's completely executed. So, how, will, how do we know the process is completely executed with the help of burst time? So, what's the burst time? 5. So, at 5 times equal to 5 the process p1 will is completely executed so until time is equal to 5 1 2 3 4 and 5 p1 is being executed and once it's done we move on to the next process at the ready queue now time is equal to 5 so within that at time is equal to 1 p2 has arrived at the ready queue and at time is equal to 2 p3 has arrived at the ready queue so, how do we choose which uh, process is executed first? This is when scheduling algorithm comes into play. We are given one of the factors we, which we discussed in the previous page, which is priority. So, what's as we have seen, higher the number, higher the priority. So, in the ready queue, we have completed P1. Now, we need to choose one from P2 and P3. So in P2 and P3, which has the highest priority, obviously 
one P two has the lowest priority. So P three has higher priority than P two. So P three is first executed until it's completely done, as it is a non-preemptive algorithm. So uh, its burst time is four. So we add four to the uh, previous burst time. So six. Seven, eight, and nine until its time is equal to nine. P three is executed. Now P three is out of the queue. Now uh, P two is the only process at the queue. So we execute P two at last with the burst time three. So we add three and we get twelve. To check if our GAN chart is correct, we can uh, check with the sum of burst time. So five plus three plus four equals twelve. So we have gotten twelve. So we have done the grand chart correct. Let's move on to the table. We have to find uh, F T means finish finish time, turnaround time, waiting time, and response time. So uh, how do we calculate uh, finish time? Finish time is nothing but when the process is completely executed. So P one is completely executed. At time is equal to five, so finish time of P one is five. Finish time of P two is twelve. Finish time of P three is nine. Now turnaround time is equal to finish time minus arrival time. So finish time we have calculated. So finish time minus arrival time for P one is five minus zero. Five minus zero equals five, and for P two twelve minus one equals eleven. Nine minus two equals seven for P three. Now for waiting time, it the formula is turnaround time minus burst time. So turnaround time we have just calculated, and burst time is given. So five minus five is zero for P one, which is the waiting time. And waiting time for P two is eleven minus three, which is eight. And for P three seven minus four, which is three. For response time, we subtract arrival time from the time when the uh, process was first all allocated to the CPU. So, the response time for P1 is zero minus zero, which is equals zero. Then, for uh, P2, uh, the time first allocated was at nine. So nine minus arrival time is one, which equals eight. Then for P three five minus two equals three. So this is how we do the priority scheduling algorithm. Thanks for watching.